All right. Okay. Take two. <laughs> oh, it looks like it's thinking still. I'll give this uh, computer a minute. Okay. All right. I think we are actually live now. So I'm so sorry. The first five minutes, I thought I was recording and I wasn't. <laughs> so, okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Ann Auburn. I'm at the Natural Health Improvement Center. Uh, owner, founder of this wonderful place of healing, and great! <laughs> I am actually live now. Um, tonight we're going to talk about your immune system, which is a very, um, very needed subject these days, right? So we've all learned so much over the last couple of years, and um, it's kind of, you know, for us, it's something we've been doing for a long time, 20 years, but we just refined it. We learned more. We got better. So I want to teach you a few of my little tricks to keep the immune system healthy. So here we go. <clears throat> All right, so um, I'm gonna get this so you can see it. All right, there we go, that's better. All right, so our, the goal is how do we get our immune system functioning optimally and maintain it? Because there's many things in our environments that can disrupt that process and um, you know, getting our immune system strong is the key to handling anything that comes our way. So the last couple of years has definitely been a wake-up call for all of us, um, even uh, those of us who were looking at this before. And, and actually this lecture, most of it I created several years ago, and I've just refined it over the years, and I give it every couple of years. But um, uh, yeah, wake-up call because uh, America is not as healthy as it should be. You know, we have more, you know, overweight people and diabetes and heart disease and all of that, despite having the best medical system in the world, really. So um, let's all just, you know, take this opportunity to see it's time to, you know, get healthy and then stay healthy. And we can teach you how to do that. That's what we do here. That's what, that's fun for us. <laughs> Okay, so what is immunity? Immunity is the end result of many mechanisms in the body that protect against infection and disease by identifying, neutralizing, and disposing of foreign substances. <clears throat> Simply put, the immune system distinguishes between self and not self. You and something foreign that your body might not do well with. So this is part of the body's self-healing capacity, which is part of osteopathic philosophy. I'm an osteopath, and we believe that the body can heal itself. So we are meant to heal through an amazing network of white blood cells, proteins, receptors, messengers from the nervous system, the glandular responses, the built-in responses from genes, which go out to each and every tissue, every minute of every day. It just never stops. The body is surviving and finding, you know, the ways to repair, neutralize, dispose of foreign invaders. So because of this immune system, the body remains relatively healthy, even in the face of you know, cuts, bruises, scrapes, accidents, toxic exposures, chemicals in our food, um, which is another topic for another day. <laughs> but eating as clean as you can makes a huge difference and has um, really helped our patients a lot. That's one of the cornerstones we're going to talk about tonight. Also, protection from <clears throat> bacteria, viruses, and the occasional overindulgence. All right, so uh, hopefully you can kind of see that in the background, a little bit bright. But um, what we're looking at here is just DNA. It's just a little schematic of DNA. And I just wanted to say that in the book Spontaneous Healing by Andrew Weil, which was written, I think, 25 years ago, um, basically, he talks about this, how it's just so miraculous that, you know, your body can find, you know, one amino acid that's out of sequence and figure out how to fix that and repair it before it becomes a problem. We actually have these amazing systems in our body. It's like um, the master computer, and uh, it really is nothing short of miraculous. So our job, having inhabited these antibod these uh, bodies, uh, we want to keep that system going as long as we possibly can. Um, so, what makes a healthy immune system? Um, I kind of stole this from my friend David Brownstein's book, uh, A Holistic Approach to Viruses, which he wrote near the beginning of this um, travesty of uh, viral infection that we've been dealing with for the last couple of years. 
David Bernstein is a mentor to me, a friend. He's a wonderful person. He's written about 17 books now on various subjects, which I love to refer my patients to. But this one really kind of goes simply into, you know, how does your immune system work? What are the things you can do to make it work better? And he also showcases his research. Um, I also have a copy of that research. Anybody who wants a copy of his research um, showing the 107 patients at his clinic that were t treated totally naturally um, for the virus. Um, and uh, you can see how what he did really worked. Um, so in his book, he talks about the three main things that make a healthy immune system. Uh, nutrients, so that's your food, your vitamins, you know, your antioxidants, A, C, uh, D3, we found out is super important. We were talking about that for a long time. Um, I think my first lecture on that was in 2013. So, um, you know, we, we've known these things all along, but it just really shone a light on how important these things are for the body. We'll talk about what vitamin D does a little bit later. Also zinc, um, I've measured many, many zincs over the last couple of years, and pretty much everybody is not in an optimal range. You might be in the range, but you wanna be in the middle of the range or higher. That's optimal, especially when you're dealing with something might come along and cause a, a, a lot of inflammation and, and wreak a bunch of havoc in your body. And then iodine, quercetin, antioxidants, and more. And then oxygen. How can we get more oxygen? We can breathe better instead of shallow breaths. You know, We can de-stress, take deep breaths. Um, exercise helps that. Exercise helps your circulation, helps you get more oxygen to more places in your body. Um, detoxing, oxidative therapies that we have here at the clinic like ozone and um, uh, hydrogen peroxide IVs and things like that. Rest, and yes, rest comes in many forms. Uh, rest can be just sleep, trying to get better sleep. Uh, yoga, mindfulness, meditation, having your praying time and your playing time. You know, those are very important. It's happiness is part of rest, resting the mind, letting the mind you know, um, reach that uh, place where it's in balance instead of like go, 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 go all the time, always stressed, always having a problem. We want to make time to have pray and play as well. <laughs> um, okay, basic biology, although it's complex, the innate and adaptive immune systems work together to provide quick responses to new and old pathogens using the tools provided by, you guessed it, nature. And this has been shaped and refined by natural selection over eons of time. So types of immunity simplified, and we'll get into this a little bit more as we go along, but innate immunity works as the sentinel system. So those are the soldiers, they're ready, they're ready to respond at a moment's notice um, to intruders. And um, you know sometimes part of this is turned off by uh, some of the vaccines out there. So, you know, increasing viral loads in people who are vaccinated uh, with various vaccines. So uh, we want this system to work. We want it to be on guard all the time. We don't want part of it to be turned off. So um, there's healthy cell death and it's associated with immune, uh, innate immune killer cells that detect infections. It starts um, cascading a number of important signals that then get the adaptive immune system to pick up and do its thing. So the adaptive immune system, that picks up signals from the innate immune system and it gets to work producing cells that tag other cells um, that are infected with the virus um, or entire pathogens like a big bacteria or something like that or foreign proteins. And the adaptive immunity will help you go get those and engulf them and, and eat them up. So I'm going to be looking over here at my screen so I can remember all of this lovely stuff that I'm going to tell you because I can't read it on the screen in back of me. Um, innate immune system consists of white blood cells. Uh, it's got specialized cells that remove so uh, toxic substances and foreign pathogens. Many are phagocytic, meaning like a Pac-Man, it goes along and finds that thing, engulfs it, and breaks it down. Um, these are like phag phagocytic cells are macrophages, monocytes, neutrophils, and dendritic cells. These cells engulf and destroy. So chemical mediators are also part of the innate immune system. They're called cytokines, and we've all heard about the cytokine storm, which can happen with many, many illnesses. You know, um, the inflammation you get with the flu and you feel achy all over, 
or if somebody gets goes into septic shock you know there's definitely inflammation everywhere all their organs causes their organs to shut down um, now there are good cytokines and bad cytokines so we want both of them we want a balance between the two of them um, and these recruit white blood cells and other molecules to the inflamed or infected areas of the body so they're they're signaling molecules then there's the physical barriers to infectious organisms that inhibit their ability to enter the body like the gut lining would be an example of that so that's part of the innate immune system so adaptive immune systems this system uses immunologic memory to activate a response to a foreign pathogen so when activated the adaptive immune system releases antibodies and other molecules to identify and destroy pathogenic organisms so bacteria viruses parasites yeast whatever it is this adaptive immune response takes more time than the innate response the cells that are activated by this system are the T cells and the B cells and these are lymphocytes derived from bone marrow all right so more on this adaptive immune system B cells are from the lymph system when they see a foreign substance or pathogen they bind it and begin to mature the B cells can then make antibodies specific for a virus or bacteria. They help neutralize the pathogenic organism. T cells are released from the bone marrow <clears throat> and migrate to the thymus gland. The thymus resides under the breastbone, so it's like right in here. When you're a little kid, up to the time you're about maybe a young teenager, you can actually see it on an x-ray the gland is big enough and as as we age as we get older it does shrink and so it can't be seen on an x-ray but it, it nonetheless it's still there and it has its job um, for these uh, B cells and um, so going on with our explanation here um, I'm sorry the T cells the T cells are released from the bone marrow and then they migrate to the thymus gland and then the thymus uh, helps those T cells to mature in that area and they mature into something called CD4 and CD8 cells so they don't produce antibodies but they can bind to a foreign substance or pathogen once bound they release chemicals to stimulate the B cells and the innate immune system to become active and aid in the neutralization or removal of a pathogen or foreign substance so CD8 T cells can kill infectious organisms and kill viral infected cells. <clears throat> Both B and T cells have immunologic memory and can respond to uh, quick, quickly to another exposure. So they're uh, out there working all the time recognizing what, what they need to help us with. So the key to winning this battle of infection, if you run into an infection, <laughs> excuse me a little allergy cough there um, having a strong immune system that can neutralize and remove a pathogenic agent so you can see how if you have an unhealthy immune system this you know this body's gonna struggle with that um, and it won't it won't work as well the cytokines might take over you might start damaging tissue and things like that so you know this is the key having this strong immune system that can react the way it's supposed to so question what influences immunity <laughs> so short answer everything um, long answer oops go back to my slide here um, diet food sensitivities allergies exercise attitude attitude is really big if you're walking around being anxious and nervous and unhappy all the time your immune system is not going to work as well and that is a proven fact um, hormones toxins um, there's somewhere along the line I read that with the virus we're dealing with that um, hormones actually reduce inflammation and therefore help reduce you know cytokine storm and things like that um, but again it does this in many ways you know many many people over the years I've put them on hormones and they have less achiness in their knees and their shoulders and their hands and things like that also um, toxins you know that's again why we have to eat as clean a diet as possible gut health We'll talk about that later. Sleep, thyroid and adrenals, aging, antioxidants, supplements, stress, and literally the ability of your cells and mechanisms inside your cells to make energy. We call that energy ATP. It's uh, produced through something called the Krebs cycle in your mitochondria. You've got like 2,000 of these little tiny microscopic mitochondria in every cell in your body. <laughs> Pretty miraculous. And they detoxify and use oxygen um, 
or, or they detoxify and then help make a ATP and run the whole, you know, um, cellular uh, process and processes. Um, and uh, also detoxifying and uh, utilizing oxygen in your tissues. Those are all really important things that we, we have a bunch of tools that affect all of these things and we just individually kind of um, administer them as needed to patients. So if you're wondering if you need any help with this, um, you know, you would have to make an appointment and we can sit down and discuss, okay, how can we maximize, how can, how can we figure out how your immune system is doing right now? So what makes an immune system weak? So, whoops, back to that slide. Obviously, lack of sleep, um, excess sugar intake, and I would say in the diet arena, and this is my friend David Brownstein says this over and over and over again too, get the sugar out. Sugar is the worst thing for you when you're sick. And I know sometimes when you're sick and you don't feel like making food or the closest thing is, you know, you know, bread, you know, potatoes, chips, whatever, please don't eat that when you're sick. <laughs> and please don't eat it on a regular basis. Those should be treats that we have occasionally. Those are, you know, high carb, high sugar, um, you know, processed foods, you know. Um, so eat real food, you know, eat, you know, real grapes off the vine, eat real, you know, tomatoes, eat real apples, eat real, you know, clean meat if you do eat meat. Um, make sure you're getting enough protein. Make sure you eat lots and lots of vegetables. I feel so sad for patients who don't like vegetables or have never learned to eat them. It is sort of a learned skill, you know, to eat vegetables. And it's interesting, once you give up sugar and you go with the natural foods and you go with the, you know, vegetables as like half your plate kind of thing, it, food starts to taste totally differently. You know, if you give up sugar, I can almost guarantee you, if you give up sugar for 120 days or even just 90 days, your taste buds will totally change. You will have a different outlook on food. Things will taste differently. A carrot will taste sweet to you. So that is the biggest thing with diet. Give up sugar. Sugar is, you know, we know like a can of Coke, you know, all the sugar in that reduces your immune system uh, function through the white blood cells, the white blood cell function, by about 50% for three to five days. Yeah, so that's the last thing you want to do if you're sick. So, oops, changed my slide again there. So also, um, poor oxygen utilization. Um, our ozone therapies will increase your ability to use oxygen at your tissues. Poor energy production, that's the mitochondria I was talking about toxic exposures, chemical solvents, things like this. We have um, info sheets. We give it to cancer patients, but they're here for anybody. How to clean up your environment, how to make your house cleaner without chemicals, how to keep your lawn and your yard you know, healthy and beautiful looking without chemicals. And please, if you have glyphosate in the form of Roundup in your garage, please just throw it out. Just get rid of it. It's terrible for you. <laughs> And it's getting in our groundwater and it's terrible for our children, it's terrible for us, and you've all seen those commercials that it causes lymphoma. <clears throat> all right, a diet high in processed foods again. Um, eat real food, you know. Yes, we all eat processed food once in a while. I do have a few boxed items that I keep in my cupboard. And, you know, I choose them wise wisely. Most of mine are, you know, not, uh, they don't have gluten in them, they don't have sh sugar in them, they don't have, you know, a lot of chemicals in them, that sort of thing. If, if I'm going to eat, you know, boxed or prepared foods, I'm going to be very, very picky about that. Um, also, the attitude, like I said earlier, poor attitude is bad for your immune system. Uh, stress, especially if it's chronic. Uh, overuse of antibiotics, overuse of medications. Um, poor gut health, we'll talk about that later. And overweight, obesity. And um, these are some of the people in my practice I saw get the sickest. Um, I actually had a, a friend who passed away, just 49 years old, down in Florida because of many factors, but one of them was he did not control his weight well. Um, <clears throat> hormonal imbalance, serious infections, and aging. So sadly, yes, aging is hard on our immune system, but we have so many tools, you know, you can grow old gracefully and keep your immune system young and, you know, keep this body functioning like it's 10 or 20 years younger. Unhealthy Americans. So sadly, yes, the U.S. population has been unhealthy for decades. 
two thirds of Americans are overweight. Um, one third of the Americans Americans are over are obese. Um, there are just too many chronic illnesses like diabetes, cancer, hypertension, heart disease, and autoimmune disorders. And they're all on the rise, especially in younger populations. And there's predictions that the uh, people younger than, I'm 58, so the, we're in the you know, 50s, 60s group, you know, um, our, our kids and their grandkids are going to live less long because of all the chemicals in the world. <clears throat> so yes, unhealthy America in comparison to other Western countries, nearly every category that's used to measure health, whether that's infant mortality, maternal mortality, chronic illness, and longevity, Americans are either last or next to last in every category. It's pretty sad when we have the best system in the world, the most money, the most resources. So there's hope though. <laughs> that's the sad part. Now we're on to the fun part. Um, integrative medicine to the rescue. We are going to teach, you know, people, and we have been teaching people for 13 years now how to get healthy and stay healthy. And sometimes you need a coach. Sometimes you need a little, you know, somebody who is cheering you on and telling you how to do it and getting you past those little kinks and um, in the road or you know in your path. And, um, you know, I've been doing this for over 25 years now, and it's amazing. I have seen some of the most unhealthy people just kind of turn around, change that trajectory to, you know, health and wellness, and just really change their life. It can be done. So, so remember, nutrients, oxygen, and sleep. So we'll talk more in detail about what else strengthens the immunity. So healthy lifestyle, positive attitude, um, reducing the intake of allergic foods. So this, of course, the sugar and everything, but also if you haven't had our food, whoops, sensitivity test, it would be good to um, have that done and see if there are foods that are causing inflammation in your body. Um, also staying away from gluten. I know people don't like to hear that because they absolutely love bread <laughs> and bread is very tasty. Um, every once in a blue moon, I might have, you know, something that's, you know, real wheat but I try to, again, choose that wisely, you know, get the cleanest form possible. And this is the thing, you know, even if you don't have celiac disease, even if you don't have gluten intolerance, like you don't get a stomach ache, you don't get a headache, you don't get body aches or whatever with it, it's just not great food in America anymore. What happens is most of the wheat in this country is sprayed with glyphosate a week or two before they harvest it so that they can, you know, keep the weeds down and get more out of that, um, you know, crop before they harvest it. And it's, you know, because it's hybridized and crossbred, it's now 42 chromosomes, it used to be 14. And because of the fact that it's um, changed in its chromosomal makeup, the gluten is now almost like an opiate. It goes right to the opiate receptors in your brain and that's why people get so addicted to it. And just the smell of bread, it's just like, I have to have some, you know? Uh, I understand, I've been there. so. But um, you really don't need it to live, you know. It's something you can do without, and there's many, many substitutes. I mean, I have, you know, made almond flour bread and all kinds of other things. I've, I've done it all. I've tried all the alternative grains. And, you know, I just figured I don't need, you know, I don't need it, you know. I'm, I'm not living to eat. I'm eating so that I can live and I can be healthy. And, and my allergies have gotten better not doing most grains. Now, I do do, you know, some gluten-free oats, and I sometimes do some um, organic rice um, or a little bit of quinoa here and there, but it, for me, grains are not a daily thing. They don't have to be in my daily diet. <clears throat> so um, hopefully that'll help you change your attitude about gluten a little bit. It really is a mindset. It's like just looking in there and going, what do I really need to be healthy? And you'll be healthier if you give up gluten and um, or, or reduce it in your diet for sure. Um, also, act, staying after, active, exercising, you know, even if you're 90 years old, you can do something. You can do, you know, little one pound weights in your arms. My dad's 90, going to be 95 here, and he's very, very frail. He's in probably the last few months of his life, but we, we have him do some little arm weights and get him moving, get his circulation going, and, and uh, we try to have fun with it, you know? And um, so anybody can exercise. It's just a matter of how much. And 
you know, uh, if you can get to, you know, 30 to 40 minutes a day, hey, that's great. Um, but, you know, it doesn't have to be P90X, you know, and burning, you know, it's just go out for a nice walk, you know, get some space, you know, that too is spiritually very good for us and our immune systems. Um, supplements, the basics. We talk about multi fish oils and Calmag for most people, especially women, and along with other supplements that you would need for anything specific. We figure that out here at the office and then any specialized treatments you may need, and we decide that again on an individual basis. <clears throat> so Hippocrates said, whoops, let's get back here, Hippocrates. Natural forces within us are the true healers of disease. So what are we trying to do here? We're trying to harness our natural healing ability. That's really what we're trying to do. And so, you know, he was alive about 2,500 years ago, and coined the father of modern medicine and you know the Hippocratic Oath do no harm you know is uh, labeled after him and um, basically he said you know that uh, among other things Hippocrates moved the practice of medicine away from superstition and uh, dogma uh, towards one more based in the careful observation and the positioning of the patient in a holistic context where he has an integrated relationship with his environment and the physician who is managing his disease. And that's what we try to do for you here. We try to do patient-centered care. Everybody's program is a little bit different, although there are basics that help everyone. So, but um, this, we're trying to live up to our Hippocratic goals here. So how do we harness those natural forces within us? And I think we've kind of gone over this a couple times now. You're going to hear me beating the same drum over and over again. Diet, supplements, stress reduction, exercise. Now, one thing I didn't say earlier is hydration. That's another biggie for my friend David Brownstein and all of us physicians that practice integrative medicine. You've got to hydrate the body. Um, you know, at least 60 ounces a day. You know, if the bare minimum you can get in is like, 50 ounces, okay, go for it. And at first you are gonna have to pee more. That's just, you know, what happens when you're putting all that fluid into the body. But your body does get used to it after a while. And even if, you know, you have prostate problems and you have to urinate a lot or you have an overactive bladder, you can take your um, water in segments, you know, like I try to do like three or four glasses in the morning. So I've got almost half my water done already. And then I try to drink one kind of in the middle or end of my day. And then I'll, you know, like tonight when we're done here, I'll probably have two or three glasses and try to get that in before, you know, nine o'clock. Uh, so I don't have to get up a lot in the middle of the night or anything. So hydration is super important. It's the, it's the body's solvent and it helps clear waste products and toxins and all kinds of things. So make sure you're doing that. <clears throat> um, Self-care, doctors and allied health practitioners. Um, what I wanted to say about this is there is a lot we can teach you to do for yourself and I'll help you learn what that is, but some things you do have to see us for, you know, and so sometimes when you call in and you ask questions and you want to know things, you know, if it's starting to like be like a visit, you know, through the nurse, <laughs> we often say, yeah, you know, come on in, you know. Now, during this time of the you know, crazy virus, we are not seeing people in the office that have symptoms of that unless they've had a negative test. So that's just the way we're doing it to protect our staff and to protect our other patients. We are dealing with a fair amount of uh, patients that have cancer now and we're supporting their immune system, so we don't wanna take any chances. So if you just think there's a slight possibility that you have a sniffle or you have a headache or you have nausea or anything like that um, and you're scheduled to come into the office for something, go get a test first. If it's negative, it's fine. Um, if, um, you know, if it's positive, then call us and we'll help you get through. All right. Um, so anyways, the great thing is we can do something about the immune system and we can individualize it to you. <clears throat> so nutrition. So it's back to you are what you eat and what you eat is, in my opinion, that is the single most important thing that influences the state of your immune system and just your general health. So nutrition is the fuel that maintains, drives, detoxifies, repairs the human body and every living organism on earth. 
So human illness and disease are the result of nutritional imbalances, really, when it comes down to it. So fast food, is that a problem? <laughs> yes, it is. We don't like fast food. We know that it has junk and chemicals and things in it that you can't even pronounce. Um, it's fried, which means it has what we call advanced glycation end products. That's like when you grill meat, you know, at very high heat and things like that. Not that grilling is terrible for you, but the slower you cook it, the better. If you could put more moisture in it, it's better. Um, but eating a lot of fried food, especially if it's fast food, which is all chemicalized, you're going to have all kinds of advanced glycation, glycation end products. We call them ages for short, and they do age you. They definitely do. <laughs> and um, they're, they just cause a lot of inflammation and disrupt various systems, and we don't want that junk in our body. Okay, occasionally if you're on a trip and you know, you didn't pack enough snacks or something like that, um, and you have to stop and get fast food, just get the cleanest thing you possibly can, like a grilled chicken breast, a salad. Um, McDonald's even has, you know, apples, you know. So, you know, eat real food, you know, and um, take the white bun off <laughs> or do a salad. You know, and it's crazy. You can do this even if you're a truck driver. You, it's like you got to stop making excuses, really. You know, that is, you know, we're... You know, we have this tendency as humans to make excuses, you know, justify, justify, and that's not going to get you better. You know, getting you better um, is going to be from making changes, positive changes. So let's get rid of the fast food. <clears throat> and then hydration, as I said earlier, water is an essential nutrient, helps us detox and cleanse. Two to three quarts of water daily and sometimes more is great. Um, at least half of all the fluids you drink in a day should be water. Um, more is better, basically. Now, you can drink too much water, too. I, I don't think I'd do more than a gallon a day. But, um, and you know, I don't really believe that a person should drink half their body weight in ounces. I'm not, um, I don't agree with that exactly. Um, but I do think that water is important and it should be clean water, purified water, or really good spring water. Um, if you do uh, reverse osmosis water, you should put mineral drops back in it. Um, I have mineral drops because I have reverse osmosis at my house, and I get these drops called pH protector drops. And I just buy them online, and I put them in anything that I am making with that water. Um, but yeah, 64 ounces should really be your goal. And Remember, if you're drinking something caffeinated like coffee, that's a diuretic. So that is going to steal some of your water. So for every cup of coffee, you drink another half cup of water, okay? Um, stress reduction. Happy people are far less likely to get sick. All organisms have a common biological response to negative sensory and psychological stressors. And they've actually measured this, having people watch sad movies and they cry and they collect their tears. And they show that the people who watch the happy movies, um, their immunoglobulins are much greater than the people who um, watch the sad movies. So um, definitely those um, types of things affect your immune system. So go out and watch lots of funny movies. <laughs> Only comedies. Um, unfortunately, it does seem that it happens all too often in the world today. Um, that there's a lot of stress. So what can we do about that? <clears throat> so these are some stress busters. And by the way, all of this is in a PowerPoint. We you know, usually do them about six per page or something like that if you want a copy of it. Or I think we could probably email it to you. So if that's something you want, you can call the office. We'd be glad to get it to you. Um, but stress busters, join a social group. Uh, play tennis with a friend or something. Um, talk to a close friend, maintain your friendships. You know, those have to be nurtured too, just like uh, marital relationships. Um, maintain a healthy balance, whoops, maintain a healthy balance of food. So don't overeat, don't undereat. You know, get a variety of foods, you know, vary your foods throughout the week. And, you know, try to get your veggies, your fruits, and your proteins in there, and then good fats. Now, some people, you know, they eat more fat. I'm not a person that can do that. I don't do well on those diets, but I have a lot of patients that do very well on the keto diet or the paleo diet. 
um, where the fat content is higher, and that's totally fine as long as you're not eating tons of carbohydrates and junk food on the side. And watch it. There's a lot of keto food um, or paleo food that is junk food too. It's just more calories. It's you know not going to make you feel any better, but it can come in handy once in a while. So um, participate in both activity and good sleep. Keep a daily gratitude journal um, and just practice gratitude. That's one of the mindfulness things you could do every day. Meditation can help some people to stay calm and um, um, help them center their mind on positive things um, and creative, creative activity. Yoga, uh, that's great for breathing, um, for you know, calming the body, stretching the body, things like that. Exercise, as we've said a couple times already, prayer. Um, listen to some good music. Something you enjoy, if you like rock and roll, listen to rock and roll. If you like country, listen to country. If you like symphony, listen to symphony, classical music, whatever. So, you know, things that enjoy, that light up your soul, that make you happy, those are the things we're talking about. And then, again, lots of funny movies. And aromatherapy is great, too. Lavender and uh, peppermint and chamomile and various other um, essential oils. So sleep. Sleep is super restorative. That's when you detox. Um, it's very important. I know, you know, we've had some really tough cases here that sometimes, you know, we can only get them just so far, but we keep working at it. Um, sleep deprivation in just, you know, two or three days can result in serious lapses in mental function, anxiety, irritability, or even cause a sad, psychotic break. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, at least six to eight hours per night is the key to continued good health and mental function. And practice good sleep hygiene. Um, we go over this in the office with our patients that are having difficulty sleeping, but try to do things that aren't so stimulating after about eight o'clock at night. Limit TV, limit computer work, avoid eating after this time. The bedroom needs to be completely dark. It's, you know, for adults, it's only for sleep and sex. For kids, it's just for sleep. <laughs> um, but anyways, it's it's a place that you should go to rest. You shouldn't have a TV in there. You shouldn't have glaring lights in there. You shouldn't have a ton of electronics in there. Electromagnetic fields are a real thing, and they do they are stimulating your nervous system. You know, a lot of my patients just turn off their Wi-Fi at night. Wi-Fi is not great to be pulsing through your your body and your house all night long. Um, and, um, you know, if you have trouble with this too, and you do a lot of computer work, you can get glasses. I think they're called blue glasses or computer glasses. They block out some of the, the blue light, I think it is. And, um, you know, that can help a lot, especially if you read a lot on a Kindle or something like that, or an iPad. Um, so you might want to look into those. Um, uh, again, avoid sugar. Uh, avoid caffeine and chocolate after 8 p.m. if you're really sensitive to it. Some people can't have any after like, you know, noon or one o'clock or something. So um, control airborne allergies with dust covers, um, minimal carpeting, use air cleaners. I have one in my bedroom because I have allergies. Um, ask about natural sleep aids. We have a whole list. We have a uh, handout that's called Sleep and Stress Aids. If you'd like to get that, it's there for you. And these are just some of the stress aids. I'm sorry I put a little line there by Ultra Theta PM because I think it's called Alpha um, Theta Ultra PM. I think that's the name and I couldn't remember it exactly. I didn't have time to fix that. But GABA is one of my big time um, ones for uh, I use for anxiety, stress, nervousness, sleep. Um, ashwagandha has become one of my super favorites. It's well tolerated by many. Now, people who don't do well with nightshades cannot do ashwagandha. It is a nightshade, but it is amazing for calming, and it's whoops, also great for mental focus. Um, so that's why I love that combination. It actually helps your brain make brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which helps your memory. It helps you learn new things, um, and I'm taking it right now. So... <laughs> Um, I take something called BDNF Essentials, which has ashwagandha and other things in it. Um, we also have Botanicom. It's a bunch of herbals mixed together. ComCP is another one of my all-time favorites. Um, Serenogen is kind of for that wired and tired sort of person. 
Uh, Nucera is a chewable that works very quickly. Um, I, I've gotten a lot of people off of Valium and Ativan with that. And then Mintran. And, and we have others. It's on the sleep and stress aid handout. Um, also, over the counter, you can get Rescue Remedy. There's uh, at your health food store, you can get lavender oil, Calms Forte, other homeopathics. Magnesium is a biggie. A lot of people, you know, don't realize that magnesium is very calming. It's not just for muscles. It's also for the brain. It's also for just calming the person, calming um, the whole body. And melatonin. Now, I put there 1 to 20 milligrams. Don't go run out and take 20 milligrams today. <laughs> You'd want to work up to that dose because some people do get, like, little weird dreams with it. It's a downstream metabolite of 5-HTP. And 5-HTP is another one that can help sleep. Or um, tryptophan uh, by itself is another one. So and there's sleep teas and all kinds of things. And we can also measure, um, we can do a um, adrenal uh, test, a salival adrenal test, adrenal test and see is your cortisol high? Do you need this kind of thing at certain times of the day? Um, and we can check things like your magnesium level. And it has to be done correctly though. It's a certain test called an RBC magnesium test because most of your magnesium lives in the cells. So we want to see what is in or on that red blood cell. So that's how we do that. And do you need a multivitamin? And it is a resounding yes. <laughs> I know people think, oh, I'm taking all these separate things. I got my B12 and my B complex and my vitamin C and my vitamin D. But you know what? That leaves out lots of other cofactors. There's lots of other minerals. There's your antioxidants, A, C, E, and selenium. Super important. And I'm sorry to say, you just can't get enough of those in your food to stay healthy. You can get enough to live. You're not going to die, probably, or get a deficiency disease, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about the maximum potential of your health here. So that's what we want to strive for is, you know, maximum potential. And, um, you know, a multivitamin is just one of the easiest ways to do that. So we have some that are two per day. We have some that are four per day. Um, when people are doing some of our detox um, programs, we have them do six a day. So anyways, multivitamin is critical. If you're not taking multivitamin, and you'll see as my talk goes on here, there's lots of different things that say you need a multivitamin. So why do you need it? Let's take a look. Um, what nutrients does the immune system need? A, B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B12, folic acid. <laughs> Okay, so there's your B-complex. Um, but are you getting the right amounts? You know, Are you getting a good quality version? Um, vitamin C, E, iron, selenium, zinc, essential fatty acids, and proteins. And there's some I didn't name there, like molybdenum. Um, say that 10 times fast. So, um, you know, there's, there's something else I'm missing there too. But yes, there's so many of these um, things that you need for your immune system to just function and your white blood cells and those T cells and B cells that we talked about earlier, they need these things. And it has to be high quality. If you're not sure if your multivitamin is kind of making the cut, bring it in and we'll look at it. Sometimes we can tell from the label, sometimes we can't, uh, but we have some clues we look at there. Okay, so also I just want to tell you there was this British study that showed that taking multivitamin daily in just four to 12 weeks showed improved cognitive function with increased accuracy and speed on a multitasking task in women and men and the same for children in attention-based tasks. And so there's more studies out there. Um, I've got a whole book on vitamins and what you should take and why, and I know there's more studies that have been done on multivitamins showing that they do make a difference. So, you know, if you have a practitioner that's saying, oh, no, 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 you can get all that stuff from your food, nope. <laughs> Sorry, you know, it's just not true today, and it probably hasn't been true for about 70 years because of the food supply being tainted and processed, and we're just under more stress. We're under more stress. We're, you know, hitting more chemicals every day that our body has to process. <clears throat> okay, supplements that enhance immunity. Um, I'm just going to kind of run through these, and then if you want to get the um, uh, PowerPoint, you can see what they are, but... Again, you don't have to do all of these. These are just choices. Alpha lipoic acid, it helps with many things, not, um, not to leave out the, one of the most important things, helps your blood sugar and your insulin receptors. Um, it also is a precursor to glutathione, which helps detox you. 
NAC is another thing I use a lot. I take it daily because of my allergies, but it also improves glutathione. You can have your glutathione checked if you want. I think Doctor's Data does it for about $80. Um, astragalus is another amazing supplement. Um, astragalus, 1,000 to 2,000 per day, really boosts the immune system and helps it function better. Um, B-complex, um, carnitine. Uh, carnitine is another thing that helps energy, the heart and muscles. Chlorella and spirulina, more green food. Now, if you eat enough green food in your diet, you don't necessarily have to do these, but they're just another thing you can do and the chlorella can help you to detox. Anything green will kind of bind on to toxins and pull it out a lot of times. Coenzyme Q10, if you're over 50, you need 100 milligrams per day. If you're on any drugs, you need another 100 milligrams per day. So that's why um, on here we have uh, 50 to 300 milligrams per day. Depends on your situation. Um, curcuminoids like Mariva SR, we also have two or three different versions here. Teriva from uh, Orthomolecular, and um, uh, we have another one from another company. I can't remember what it is right now, but curcuminoids are amazing. They're anti-inflammatory, but they're also anti-cancer. Um, echinacea is a powerful immune booster. I didn't put elderberry on here, but of course elderberry, uh, don't, you know, I wouldn't go crazy on it, you know, like a teaspoon <laughs> once or twice a day. It's probably enough, or eating actual elderberries. Um, but elderberry syrup is fine as long as you don't overdo it. Garlic. Garlic is amazing. It does so many things for the human body. It's anti, you know, yeast, antibacterial, antiviral. It's good for your blood vessels. It's good for your heart. It's good for your cholesterol. And L-glutamine. I didn't know this um, or I hadn't remembered it um, for many years, but it, it does enhance immunity. It helps you increase your secretory IgA in your gut, and it heals the gut, too. We use it often for healing the gut. Um, and it tends to kind of reduce those cravings for sugary foods. Some people will actually use it if they tend to get a little heartburn, putting a teaspoon or a scoop in about four to six ounces of water and drinking it down can calm things down. Um, green tea extract is amazing. If you don't drink green tea or you don't like green tea, I would uh, find a way to like it because it's anti-cancer and detoxing and it's amazing. Monolaurin is one of my favorite supplements. It's made from, it's lauracetic acid, which is made from coconut. Even if you're allergic to coconut, though, you can take it because it's an extract of that, and I've never seen anybody react to it that had a coconut allergy. But it's a natural antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial, and immune booster. It works in many ways. <clears throat> Magnesium, again, we talked about that already. Probiotics, um, those we individualize, but we have some general ones, and the girls in our supplement area can help you with that, or you can always ask us. Selenium, that should be in your multivitamin at least 200 milligrams per day. Um, and then we can always test that too. We can test and see if your selenium levels are good. L-taurine, taurine is uh, good for immune boosting, calming, and it helps blood pressure and fluid retention. Um, transfer factor multi-immune is one of my all-time favorites. I love transfer factor multi-immune. It's got bovine transfer factor from colostrum. It's got beta-1,3 glucan, which is one of my, another uh, amazing supplement, and it's got mushroom extracts. Remember, anything with mushroom extracts increases your natural killer cells. Um, Immucor, uh, that's a mushroom extract product we have here. Immunoconoco 750, another uh, mushroom extract product. Immune Defense is another one we have here. And then Argentin 23 is our um, silver hydrosol, much finer particles than colloidal silver. <clears throat> We've got uh, spray for the nose, and we have teaspoons that you can just uh, take uh, as a almost like a drink. Uh, vitamin A and carotenoids. Um, really, everybody should be taking you know five to twenty-five thousand a day. If you're going to do something that's like twenty twenty-five thousand a day, like a strong multivitamin, only about five to ten of that should be actual vitamin A on a regular basis. Um, pregnant women, we usually keep them at about five thousand per day. Um, you can't overdose on beta carotene though. So most of these are mixed vitamin A, retinal palmitate with beta carotene. And you can't overdo that. You can take as much as you want and you're not going to get toxic on it. Um, you want to be just careful if you have liver disease. Um, but even in those people, they can take it. It's part of our viral protocol. And um, uh, one other thing about vitamin A is in third world countries, they use that for little kids to get measles. 
and they literally, literally give them 100,000 units daily for a week, and it doesn't hurt them. It actually works for the measles. So it's safe to do for short periods of time in those high doses. Vitamin C, 500 to 5,000 a day. Right now I'm telling people to take at least 1,000 a day if you could do 2,000 a day. And if you can get the liposomal C, that's the version that's lipid soluble, you're gonna get a lot more of it into your cells. Actually right now that's the only vitamin C we have available because our other ones are on back order. And this is the kind I take all the time. I love liposomal C, and um, it does it will not cause any GI distress. So, um, vitamin E, 400 to 800 units, and then your zinc, 25 to 50 milligrams per day. Um, okay, and then we have a bunch of other supplements like ADP, which is oregano, candibactin BR, which is berberine, ultra MFP forte, which is um, grapefruit seed extract, and other things. Um, in a combination for, we use it a lot for candida, but you can use it for you know any kind of viral bacterial thing too. Olive leaf, iodine, iodine will kill just about everything. I'll talk to you about that in a second. Um, also just noted here, Conjuplex, Imiplex, Echinacea, and Essential Defense. These will all increase your T cells and natural killer cells and the transfer factor multi-immune and the immu core. Um, these are fantastic immune boosters. Still to this day, I am still taking an immune booster every day. I take one, uh, you know, and I rotate them around. The other one that I love a lot, which I don't have on here, I forgot to update that, is Biocidin. And Biocidin um, comes in like a liquid, it comes in a capsule, and then it comes in a liposomal version, which can be fantastic for people who have biofilms from gut problems and things like that. And it's much more absorbed, so. And then uh, I think that's about it. So let's see what else we have here. Okay, iodine. Iodine's been proven to be a potent inactivating agent to the influenza virus. Like in 1918, when they had the H1N1 influenza pandemic, 30 million people died. Um, back then, they did find out in some studies post you know, um, the pandemic then that it was found to be one of the most effective antiviral agents. So it improves lymphatic flow. Um, it's also um, uh, been shown to increase IgG, immunoglobulin G, in human lymphocytes, so that's a good thing. And iodine deficiency is associated with decreased phagocytic activity of those uh, neutrophils, those white blood cells we talked about earlier. And iodine has been shown to increase white blood cells' ability to kill infectious organisms. So you can read more about this in my friend David Brownstein's book. Um, uh, it's just called Iodine, I think. <laughs> you can buy that on his website. It's very good and gives you way more detail. Vitamin D, we could go on for, I could do a whole lecture on vitamin D. I have before, but it's an amazing nutrient. You want it between at least 50 and 70. <clears throat> if you've ever had cancer, you want it to be between 70 and 90. Um, and that's not just current cancer, that's like if you've ever had cancer. So, and it's, you know, you can basically say if you don't have the ability to get your blood level checked, but you should, uh, we can do it here for about $50. Maybe it's less than that, maybe 25 or something. But anyway, we send it to Boston Heart Labs, and it's way cheaper than a regular lab. Uh, but if you can't, if there's some reason you can't do that, I would say take at least 2,000 units daily, children at least 1,000 units daily, and even babies can take that much. Um, even the Pediatric Society or Association, they even say breastfeeding babies should take 600 units per day. So, but get your level check because a lot of our patients need somewhere between five and 10,000 a day. I've had people need huge amounts and then it reaches a threshold and then they can go down to a base dose. And you always need more in the winter. So this is actually a really good time right now to get your levels checked. It enhances mood, it helps your bones. It's super important for bones and the level should be over 50 for that. And it has the nice side effect of also reducing inflammation and can even help blood pressure. So, um, I also learned in the last couple of years with our uh, viral friend that we've been dealing with, um, vitamin D helps your white blood cells make their own antibiotics. Amazing, huh? Another thing that nature does. Um, vitamin D reduces inflammatory cytokines and then it increases the good ones, the anti-inflammatory cytokines. Um, so sounds pretty perfect for flu season uh, or for any infection. So keep those levels up and get yours checked. 
Um, okay, now I just put this here just so you can see. This is on our website. If you go to our website, nhicwestmi.com, and if you go, there's a About tab at the top. And then if you click on that, a scroll down menu will come up and it'll say Patient Resources. And you click on that, and if you go to that page, we have all kinds of wonderful handouts and tips and things like that. But there's two handouts. There is um, the Immune Boosting Handout, which this one is. And it basically goes over what I would recommend for adults and children to take on a daily basis, especially for flu season, winter, and um, especially while we're dealing with, you know, the virus. So, um, and then what I do is I say, okay, these are your basic things on top of your multi and your fish oils. And then these are the immune boosters you can choose from. And there's like 10 or 12 of them. We have lots of them and I've had patients bring in other ones that I've never even heard of that are amazing. <laughs> so you have to do something for your immune system in this crazy time. And especially in the winter, it's just a really good idea. But what is the best thing for your immune system? Stay away from sugar, <laughs> right? So remember, staying away from sugar is the biggest thing you can do. Um, intestinal health. So I, I want to kind of fly through this. I know we're, you're basically uh, at 7 o'clock. If you can hang around for another 15 minutes, I'll try to, um, you know, get through this. And if you have to leave now, totally fine. Um, we're, we're recording this, so it will be on the Facebook page anytime you want to watch it. <clears throat> so, so next to what we eat every day, intestinal health is probably the next most important thing. You know, that lining of your gut that is like, if you stretched it out, flattened it all out, it would be the size of two doubles tennis courts. <laughs> so you've got a lot of things going on in that lining. It's really important. That's your, it's a major barrier for toxins, you know, and things like that. And if it gets damaged, like many Americans it is, and you have leaky gut syndrome, then you are, you know, letting toxins and foreign materials and um, allergens and things like that just go right back into those little microscopic cracks in the wall and it goes right back to your uh, lymphatic system or right back to your vascular system. And then you got to deal with that stuff all over again. It's hard on the liver and it's um, hard on the kidneys and it's just hard on your immune system. It takes time and energy to deal with that. So why is this? It's because you have the gut associated lymphatic tissue, GALT. There is so much lymphatic tissue that lines your intestines. Um, you know, as a resident, I was able to watch, you know, surgeries, and it's just incredible. Also, in med school, you have to do um, dissection, and you can see there's just tons and tons of lymphatics there. I mean, you have lymphatics all over your body here and around the, the breasts and the chest and the diaphragm, and then your whole gut is lined with it. They're everywhere. So... But we need them. They, they take away the waste products. They help, you know, with the T cell and B cell function. I guess it's the B cell function more. But, um, you know, basically scientists that study this sort of thing, they have observed that 60 to 70 percent of the immune system is in your gut. So your gut's really important. If you don't know if you have a healthy gut, there's many tests we can do. If you're wondering, like, hmm, I wonder there's many tests we can do or just a couple of tests that tell us if your gut is healthy and one of those is the food allergy test because with the food allergies if you come up with more than 15 to 20 items we're sure that there's some leaky gut there and then we'll give you a treatment for it and then the liver the liver is one of the largest largest organs in the in the abdomen um, it is up here in this right upper quadrant um, under the uh, rib cage on the right and it's part of your GI system because it's connected to the gallbladder and the gallbladder pumps out the bile to help you digest fats and the liver is also like the filter of the body and it has a couple of phases we call them phase one and phase two liver detox uh, part of it is binding the toxins and then part of them is kind of like wrapping up the toxins and then sending them out through um, the system that takes them out through the kidneys or the bowel. So uh, the liver also makes cholesterol and cholesterol is what our hormones are made of. And, you know, it's just, it humanizes everything we put in our body. So it's, 
got amazing detoxification and cleansing and healing powers and it's extremely important to have a healthy functional liver you know coffee goes through the liver so that's why i always tell people try to keep your coffee at you know two to three cups a day that's okay there could be some benefits but once you get over that third cup you're starting to stress the liver it has to go through the liver it has to get processed and um you know why don't you instead of one of those cups of coffee do dandelion tea dandelion is amazing for the liver another one that, that's great for the liver is milk thistle now you don't have to do milk thistle if you don't want to uh, it's not something i have people do every day but if i if I see that they have insulin resistance, high lipids, high cholesterol, um, or there's any other signs that their liver is taxed, um, I get them to you know take it for a while, or I get them to do our Ultra Clear Detox. Um, Ultra Clear Plus is one of my favorite things in the world. I don't know if you could see it there. Also, there's another version of this called Ultra Clear Renew, and Ultra Clear Renew takes out even more than this. This is more for like chemicals in phase two. So the Ultra Clear Renew is kind of like this, plus it's got some things in it to help you um, pull out heavy metals. So I personally do the Ultra Clear Renew 21 day detox twice a year, spring and fall. It's just, you know, spring cleaning and fall winter preparation. Um, I'm about getting ready to do one of those right now. Um, it's easy to do. It's just a drink. It's um, a protein drink that's based in rice protein. And then it has all the nutrients in it to help your phase two liver detox. If you can't do that, there are ways to do it with like AdvaClear, which is another product from that same company. Um, you know, we, we can come up with all kinds of things, but that is a simple to do program. It comes with a nice booklet. It tells you how to do it and it tells you diet recommendations too. And it's, it's one of those things I love to do with people when they're a new patient because it just cleans the slate. It gets them off the sugar and it gets them rolling in that more healthy direction. So that is really great for your liver. And here's, you know, picture of the intestines on the um, side that's less plump it's more yellow there that is an unhealthy gut you can see there's little microscopic cracks in there um, let's see if you can see those microscopic cracks in here and the toxins um, are kind of slipping back down through to the other side and getting in the blood vessels and the lymphatic system here you have your healthy gut get a healthy diet and in the healthy gut you got lots of good bacteria the toxins are being kind of wrapped up and taken away appropriately. That's the kind of gut we want. We want good gut, not bad gut, okay? <laughs> and, you know, if you do end up with leaky gut syndrome, basically this is when the intestines are not providing the barrier that they're supposed to, um, you know, have there for you. And it, your liver has to process this stuff over and over again. And this stress leads to a heightened inflammatory state and lowered immunity. And I have heard it said by a PhD that people who have leaky gut are more likely to get sick with viral illness, for sure, you know? So, but I mean, that goes for any illness. You're more likely to get sick if your gut has all this inflammation. And where is that inflammation going? It's going to your lungs. It's going to your sinuses. It's going to your skin. It's going wherever it goes in you, your joints, you know, things like that. So detox, detox, detox. So if you can calm your gastrointestinal inflammation, this is not like you don't have to have, um, you know, like GERD or heartburn. We're not talking about that. You could have leaky gut and not even know. Maybe your only symptom is I'm tired. And, you know, you want to calm this inflammation, heal the gut, and get the uh, inflammation that's going to the non-gastrointestinal tissues, uh, like joints, lungs, skin, stuff like that. You wanna get that under control. And then you're improving your immune system at the same time. And that's why I love Ultra Clear Plus. This stuff is amazing. <laughs> and I've tried many, many, many versions of this that are copycats. This is the best. It tastes the best. It's the easiest to take. Uh, it's actually enjoyable. So. And here on these slides, we're just flipping through all of the various things. I mean, look at that fever of unknown origin, phlebitis, vasculitis. These are related to leaky gut. You know, these are not situations you want when a deadly virus is going around your town. Um, you know, candida infections. We have a simple blood test for about 70 bucks we can do to see if you have that. Um, but all these things, aging, acne, colitis, um, 
eczema, irritable bowel syndrome, et cetera, et cetera. And the list goes on. Intestinal infections, malnutrition, nutritional deficiencies, like that's the last thing we want when uh, we're trying to get our immune system healthy for the winter. Okay, and then um, causes of irritable bowel syndrome. This is just kind of relating the fact that wheat is up there. 60% of the patients with irritable bowel syndrome, diarrhea, cramping pain, irregular bowels, whatever, 60% of those people had wheat as a food sensitivity. And then uh, behind that is your milk, corn, cheese, oats, coffee, although I don't see it that much on my test, but yeah. So these are simple things. If you can do nothing else and you have health problems, just get off wheat, sugar, and dairy. Wheat, sugar, and dairy are the, the things that cause more problems than anything else. So how do we fix this? We fix it with what we call the 4R program. We remove the offending substances. We replace the digestive enzymes um, with some kind of digestive acids if needed or enzymes. And then we re-inoculate with the probiotics and we restore the digestive mucosa. And uh, we kind of have a new GI repair program that kind of takes this into consideration um, where we use uh, IgG Protect, which helps the immune system in the gut and kind of binds up some of those toxins and inflammatory mediators and gets them out of there, along with um, uh, high dose probiotics and you know cleaning up the diet. And it really works. We've seen some amazing, amazing results. And this is, can't see it very well, but this is a stool analysis. I don't know if I can get that picture any better. You can kind of see that it gives you lots of data about the stool. Like things that you'll have on here are um, how many good bacteria do you have? Um, do you have inflammation in your gut? Is your immune system in your gut working appropriately? Do you have yeast overgrowth? Do you have uh, bacterial overgrowth, et cetera, et cetera. So, so that is a great test and it can get very specific. We do have some even more involved um, tests that we do for the gut <coughs> that will tell you like what kind of good bacteria you have and um, you know, good bacteria, do you have enough of them? Are they out of balance and things like that? Those ones are so complicated that we do a consult with the lab before we talk to you about it. Um, okay, the thymus gland, we talked about that earlier. It sits right here. That's where those B cells do their work and T cells. Uh, T cells, I'm sorry, T cells. Um, it's the master gland of the immune system. It releases hormones and regulates many immune functions. If these are low, then the susceptibility to infection is greater. So the thymus is involved in producing the T cells and um, it's a special type of lymphocyte, really, or white blood cell. Uh, that's what your T cell is, as we talked about earlier. Antioxidants, vitamin C, vitamin E, beta carotene, selenium, and zinc help to maintain a healthy thymus. So there we are again, multivitamin. <laughs> so, okay. And the T cells, um, again, they're the special forces. Um, in medicine, the medical term for the work of the T cells is cell-mediated immunity and the production of the T-cells by the thymus creates resistance to many viruses and other illnesses out there, infections and whatnot. Supporting the function of the thymus gland boosts immunity and overall health, and it's part of the adaptive immune system. <clears throat> so um, thymus gland extracts that we have at our practice, um, like Conjuplex and Immuplex and the like, um, they help to improve the ability of your thymus gland. So, um, you know, you would give it to anybody who has immune deficiency, but also, you know, you can use it as an immune booster to help your T cells function better when you need them and in preparation for that event. So Conjplex and Immuplex are those. Um, they also contain um, enzymes and coenzymes and synergistic cofactors, but they do have the thymus gland extract, usually from bovine source. Um, so um, if you don't like you know, this because maybe you're vegan or vegetarian, or you don't like stuff from animals, then we can do the transfer factor multi-immune, and those will help in a similar way, but not specifically for the thymus. So um, essential oils, I don't know much about this subject, but I do know that it's in my Biocidin product, and Biocidin is amazing. It has activity against like Lyme and strep, and all kinds of crazy viral infections, things like that. So I love Biocidin, it's one of my favorites. And 
again, yeah, there's other things you can do with essential oils that I don't know that much about. And there's uh, specialists in the area we can refer you to if you want more about that. Um, <clears throat> so, again, um, when you're sick, um, you can, in preparation, go to our website, nhicwestmi.com, hit the About tab, hit the Patient Resources, and you'll see the immune boosting protocol that I showed you earlier, but then there's one called Immune Support for, Vi for Viral Illness. We've always had something like this, but because of the uh, crazy viral problem we've had these last two years, we basically upped our game and made it very clear and concise and with what your options are. And uh, when you're sick, we have you increase some nutrients like vitamin C, A, and D, um, and uh, zinc and, uh, for uh, a good five days, you know, so that you're really hitting it hard. Like literally we tell adults to do 50,000 units a day of vitamin D for five days. Um, some references I've seen say up to 200, thousand but I probably wouldn't do that myself but um, but then of course um, we've got quercetin in there because it helps zinc get into your cells and it's anti-inflammatory and reduces cytokines of course pregnant women and infants you have to kind of um, take that into consideration and there are some comments on there about what to do in those situations also you should be prepared with a hydrogen uh, peroxide nebulizer uh, treatment kit okay we'll call it that uh, this is on the Immune Support for Vi Viral Illness um, Protocol handout. It's on our website, so you'll see it there. Don't wait until you're sick to get an nebulizer. It's just, you know, I, I really kind of learned my lesson this year uh, with people having to scramble to get this at the last minute. And when you get a nebulizer, get one that has a mask. Okay, you want a mask because you want the uh, hydrogen peroxide diluted down with the iodine that you're going to put in there. You want that to go into your nose and your mouth because the main place that viruses go are in the nose, but they can also get in through the mouth. They can get in through any orifice, but those are the main places. So get a mask, not just something that has a tube that goes in your mouth. And then we have the recipe there of how to dilute it. It's basically a tablespoon of 3% hydrogen peroxide and you put that in about eight ounces of water. Now, when we surveyed my um, integrative medicine group, there was all kinds of recipes. <laughs> There's a, a lot of ways to do this. So, and most of them are very, very safe. Uh, they are all very safe. Um, if it burns and you don't like the way that makes your back of your throat feel, then just do, you know, dilute it a little bit more. But this is a good solution. Um, and um, it does not have to be um, uh, food grade hydrogen peroxide. I mean, yes, maybe that's a little cleaner, but it's all sterile, right? So if you only have the stuff in the brown bottle, definitely use that. And, you know, you can prepare this ahead of time and keep it in like a stainless steel container or a glass container that's nice and sealed. You know, if it's been in there more than, you know, a month or two, you know, dump it out and make new. But so what you're going to do is take a teaspoon of this, which is five cc's, and you're gonna put it in the well of the nebulizer. There's a little well there for, for water and for the fluid you're gonna nebulize and then you nebulize it and you do that three times a day. I do it for my allergies um, and I, have, I did it when I had the nasty little virus in April and I've had people tell me that bam, they just were able to breathe again. Now again, that depends on the person. It depends you know, how far things have gotten into the lungs so if you do any of this stuff, please call us. <laughs> you know, we're here for you if you're a patient of ours. If you're not a patient of ours, we are setting up a system uh, where we can, you know, take care of people. I can only take care of people in Michigan. I do not have a license anywhere else. So um, anyways, we will help you through it and help you get what you need. And um, lastly, I've also got some info on detoxification. Uh, we talked about that earlier. I think that's super duper important. That's why I do the Ultra Clear Renew um, twice per year. And, um, you know, there's other ways to do it. We've got listed here alpha lipoic acid, NAC, taking your basics, drinking purified water, exercising, sleep. These are all like daily detoxifiers, you know? We should be doing this every day. So, um, and, you know, if I get a chronically ill patient, I try to get them to detox before I put them on a big program because sometimes people can get, you know, really sick if you 
don't kind of clean the slate first. So detoxing is really important. And um, again, here the Ultra Clear Renew or Ultra Clear Plus. Um, there's a whole family of Ultra Clear supplements. Um, we use probably about three out of, well, four out of five of them. Um, and we love them and they do a good job and they actually taste good. <laughs> Um, there is also what we call a mini detox program. I like the 21 day program, but there's a mini detox program for 10 days. It's all in a kit. It's, I don't know how much it is. I can't remember, but it's everything you need for a 10 day cleanse. I personally don't like to do it that fast because I don't like to drink my food that much. So I like to do the ultra clear plus and I just work up to my two scoops per day and I do it for 21 days, which is about how long it takes to get through that canister. Um, our girls can send you the information if you want to do that. Um, honestly, you don't even have to be a patient here to do that. So feel free um, to do that and get instructions from us. Um, other detoxifications are chelation. Uh, I'm not going to get into the chelation too much today, um, but just let's suffice it to say that chelation comes from the Greek word keel. It means claw because chelators are specific molecules that go in and they find a heavy metal and they throw out their salt that is part of their molecule and then they grab the heavy metal and they will not let it go until the body pees or poops it out, okay? And that's chelation. And we have oral chelation, we have IV chelation, we have gentle forms, we have more you know, heavy duty forms. This is a patient on here, see these lines way out here? This is mercury and lead, that is horrible. <laughs> So this person was very, very toxic. And what do heavy metals do? They're terrible for you. They're immune suppressants. That's why I'm telling you about them right now. You were probably wondering, why was I talking about heavy metals? <laughs> but heavy metals are not good for your immune system. They clog up the system. They're inflammatory. They're um, endocrine disruptors. And if you look here, this little um, uh, thing here shows you that, whoops, when you have mercury, lead, arsenic, nickel, cadmium, or tin in too high of numbers, it decreases the cell numbers and the phagocytic activity. Remember, we were talking about phagocytes at the very beginning of this talk. So yes, it does tie in. Heavy metals are bad for you. So, you know, we have a lot more of those in an industrial world. So it's a good idea to get your heavy metals checked at some point. It's a little bit of a process. So let us know if you're interested. Um, also, one thing I should say about that is please, if you have silver fillings in your mouth, please get them out. They're terrible for you. Every time you chew, drink something hot or cold, and your teeth expand and contract, those heavy metals are coming out and they're getting into your body and they're hard to get out once they get in. So just have that stuff removed. If you have to, you can do it one at a time, one at a time, once, you know, I, I had eight of them removed and I did it over 20 years ago and I'm so happy I did it because I don't have that burden on my body anymore. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, heavy metals definitely, um, they're not great for your gastrointestinal system, they're not great for your immune function, and they're terrible for your immune status or your nutritional status. So those are nasty little buggers. I won't go into the individual ones, but they are listed there for you if you do want to get a copy of the PowerPoint. Um, hormonal imbalance or hormonal balance. Um, again, all of these things do affect your immune system because they affect your metabolism, your ability to burn calories, um, your ability to, um, you know, pump blood the way you should, um, your heart rate, your blood pressure, things like that. So thyroid, adrenals, these affect your sleep, your daytime energy, your happiness. Um, male and female hormones. Now, I know a lot of people are like, ooh, hormones, but if you feel like hormones are bad, you need to read the book Smart Women Safe Hormones by Lindsay Berkson. She's a friend of mine and she has just a super scientific mind and she shows you that all three studies that have been done with hormones, hormones, placebo, follow them years over time, yeah that um, it, it shows that there is no increase in cancer of any kind. And there's no um, increase in um, any kind of heart disease either. So hormones are good for you. Of course, we take people off of them if they get cancer, but that's not the reason you got cancer. Cancer is the sugar, the toxins, the being overweight, you know, all the other things I'm talking about. It's a dysfunctional immune system. So it's not the hormones. 
And, um, you know, I know that's not what you hear from, you know, your traditional doctor, but it's true. <laughs> okay, so hormonal balance is important. And they help your circulation. They, estrogen and testosterone protect the heart, protect your circulation, reduce inflammation. And that's what A.T. Still, the founder of osteopathy, said. The rule of the artery is supreme. And what does that mean? It means circulation. I mean, look at this. Oh, you can't see it there. Sorry. But um, this is, whoops, <laughs> sort of you can see it there. It's all the blood vessels of the body. So anyways, blood vessels are super important. They carry all the nutrients, the oxygen, everything. And the lymph flow is the other side of that that takes away the waste products. Super duper important. That's why we're talking about all this stuff. And hormones help that. So, and exercise helps that. We already talked about that. So get out there and exercise. Do whatever you can, even if it's just to smell the roses walk, even if it's just, you know, the weights in the chair, you know, wiggling your toes. You got to do something. Um, also, just real quick, I wanted to tell you about some of our IV stuff. Um, we have lots of IV nutritional supplementation, and it's great for people recovering from acute illness. Um, especially with the virus, what we've done is had um, people come in and get after they're um, done with the acute part of the illness and recovering if they need it. We have them come in and either get uh, ozone IV, which um, has many effects on the body, and uh, vitamin C IV. And you can run them one right after the other as long as you do the ozone first. Or some people just opt to do 25 grams of vitamin C and do two or three of those, and it really helps to get their immune system functioning again, reduce inflammation, improve oxygenation. So, you know, when you're preparing for surgery or recovering from surgery or you have chronic fatigue or you're dealing with Lyme, you know, uh, or you're dealing with cancer, your best bet is IV nutrition because you're going to get the most to the tissue through the IV. Orally, you're always going to lose some. You know, we've found other forms that are um, better, you know, and absorb better. But IV is, you know, king. It really is. So if you can afford it, if you can do it. You know, sometimes some of my patients, they just come in and they'll get a Myers cocktail. Sometimes we call it a Super Myers. Vitamin C, uh, B complex. Um, oh, oh, yeah, there's the ingredients for it there. Um, magnesium, calcium, B complex, B5, B6, B12, and vitamin C. And Trace Minerals is also in the larger version called the Myers Cocktail. We have a smaller version that you can push over about 15 to 20 minutes. It's called a Gabby Wright IV Push. The IV takes about 45 minutes. So um, they're amazing. And, you know, if you get one a week for four of them, you're going to be, you know, really better off this winter. Um, yeah, I won't go into the theoretical basis for IV treatment because I just kind of told you, you just get more out of it. Um, and a, a lot of things are improved by the Gabby Wright IV push or the Myers, Myers cocktail. Dr. Uh, um, Alan Gabby wrote a paper on that and asthma, allergies, chronic hives, migraine headaches, muscle pain, upper respiratory infections, chronic viral syndrome, depression, narcotic withdrawal, athletic performance. All of these things are improved with these. We also have an IV called the half Felice IV. Now, the half felice is an amino acid IV, so just think repair. So we use it often after surgery and before surgery, severe fatigue, chronic fatigue, um, broken bones, um, people who are really struggling with adrenal fatigue. It's more expensive, um, so it's, you know, unfortunately over the years the price has gone way up, but it is really amazing and it helps healing. Um, and then our IV vitamin C, there's over 1,200 medical and scientific journal articles. It's not just for bacteria, as a doctor recently told me. Um, it is for viruses. It is for many, many things. It's been studied in sepsis by Dr. Merrick, M-A-R-E-K. He's part of the FLCCC.net uh, critical care medicine group that is um, saying this should be done. Um, and it just continues to be one of the most researched substances in the world. Linus Pauling got a, a Nobel Prize for his work. And there's a really great guy, Dr. Thomas Levy, L-E-V-Y. He's an MD, also an attorney, and he wrote a book. And the book is called Vitamin C, Infectious Diseases and Toxins, Curing the Incurable. And um, it really goes over everything. And, you know, I've talked to him personally on the phone, and he's like, 
you know, if you can't do the IVs, do any form of oral vitamin C you can. Something's better than nothing. But we love the um, uh, liposomal vitamin C because you get so much more and it doesn't bother your gut. And then ozone IVs. Um, again, I'll just real quick go over the fact that these things are amazing for your immune system. It stimulates the production of white blood cells. What were we just talking about? Interferon levels are significantly increased. They orchestrate your immune system. It stimulates the production of tumor necrosis factor. Uh, it stimulates the secretion of IL-2. Um, and those uh, help the uh, immune system and are secreted by T helper cells. It kills most bacteria at low concentrations. It's effective against all types of fungi and yeast. It's an amazing antiviral. Um, it's even got activity against Ebola. One of the doctors in our group did a, some research on that. It's anti-neoplastic. It takes care of arterial, some arterial plaque. It uh, increases the uh, flexibility of the red blood cells, so you get better blood flow, so more oxygen. It increases the Krebs cycle production of that ATP energy through the mitochondria, so your cells will function better and longer. Um, it increases the production of antioxidants. You can only take so much vitamin C or antioxidants, right? And they get used up right away. Well, this helps you produce your enzymes that help you make antioxidants. Um, and it breaks down petrochemicals, another wonderful thing. So, and then we also have ultraviolet blood irradiation, um, also known as photoluminescence. And it was used extensively in the 40s and 50s to treat many diseases, septicemia, pneumonia, tuberculosis, arthritis, asthma, etc. So um, we have that machine here. We often combine it with the ozone. We call it UBI with ozone. And so you can do both of those at once for a really powerful treatment, which we often do for um, our Lyme patients. And then acupuncture. Acupuncture improves circulation, boosts immunity, addresses allergies and um, other environmental things that you might be reacting to. Um, it enhances detox, it's stress relief, it help, you can get help with smoking sensation, cessation if you are a smoker, and it increases the level of ins the circulating endorphins, the feel-good chemicals, and those are anti-inflammatory. So we have all these tools here, and we're here to help you. And I'm so sorry I ran over by about a half hour, but I just got through 90 slides. <laughs> So, but I hope that was helpful to you. I hope that you learned a little bit about the immune system and I wish you the best of health. And if you have any questions, please call us, visit our website. We have tons of wonderful information there. And if you'd like a copy of our PowerPoint, please let us know, we'll get it to you. All right, thank you and good night. Bye now.